hello welcome once more to our youtube channel it's always a pleasure to bring you guys some scientific content and thank you for hopping in let's go Okay, so today, very quickly, we are going to be looking at a question in the KC STEM National Competition. One of the very fascinating questions we had on that exam. Let's check it out. So the question reads, a shell is shot with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second at 60 degrees to the horizontal. At the top of the trajectory, the shell explodes into two fragments of equal mass. One fragment falls down vertically, how far from the gun does the other fragment land and at what speed assuming that the terrain is level and that air drag is negligible. Well, we can start by a diagrammatic representation of what is happening here. So you're projecting a projectile with, an ang with a velocity of u at an angle theta to the horizontal. Clearly, we can resolve this initial velocity to its horizontal and vertical component of that velocity and if you come all the way to this maximum point this is where the explosion occurs at b so you get one particle maybe u1 dropping down and then u2 continuing in that horizontal trajectory and of course we can get to this point that we calculate the horizontal velocity u2 travels with of course using the statement of law of conservation of momentum all right so we can go ahead and first of all get this range here this first part of the range which is not a problem right the explosion happens here so let's get this first part of the range range generally is u squared sine two theta over g so we want range over two because i mean like when it gets to this point the dynamics of the motion changes so we want to get range over two so when you put in u which is 20 meters per second your sine 2 theta and then your g which is 9.8 you get r over 2 as 17.67 now we can go on and then talk about the horizontal component of the velocity which is vx at this particular point right but then you notice that gravity does not act on the horizontal direction to change the magnitude of that velocity so vx is always ux which is equal to u cos theta and our theta is 60 our u is 20 cos 60 is half times 20 is 10 so our vx at this particular point is 10 so all along the path of the projectile the horizontal component of the velocity is always just 10 meters per second it's always equal to the initial velocity okay so we also go ahead and then we see from the conservation of momentum at b in the x direction of course momentum is a vector quantity so it's important for you to talk about the direction where you want to apply the conservation of momentum and so the final momentum or let in this case the initial momentum all right mv right that's the momentum of the particle when it has not yet exploded is equal to the, mo the sum of the momenta of its part okay so you have m1 u1 the guy that fell vertically but this u1 is actually zero in that x direction because you are falling vertically it means that you have no velocity in the x direction right so the only guy that is going to have momentum in the x direction is actually going to be u2 so we are going to now get um this guy is zero so we actually make u2 the subject we have mv over m2 uh, remember that it divides the mass fragments into two parts, two equal parts. So it means that M or M2 is half of M, right? And so our U2 is basically going to be 2V, all right? Because M over M2 gives us two. So you have 2V here. And then, but remember that this V is in the horizontal direction. So what was V? V in the horizontal direction is basically your Vx, which is 10 meters per second. So when you multiply that by two, you have 20 meters per second. And so we can go on and then we now get the maximum height reached by this projectile right so can we calculate this maximum height h yes we can it's u squared sine squared theta over 2g again we get that h max substituting the values it's 15.3 meters now to get this other part of the range remember that the particle now moves from this b and then covers this vertical height h so we needed this vertical height because to get this other part of the range of course we'll be using that vertical height so um again range this part of the range arrow prime is actually um like you get every other range in projectile u times t right u x times t u in that x direction is just u2 right because the particle travels all horizontally with u2 but what is t you can use uh the vertical displacement of a particle that's projected like this from with a horizontal velocity so it has no initial vertical velocity so you can use s equals to ut minus half gt squared u is zero so your vertical displacement h is now basically just um half gt squared right and so you make that the subject realize that you have 2h over g for our time so that's why i'm replacing range is normally u times t 
but that t can be found using square root of 2h over g perfect and so we have that as arrow prime with substitute the values and then we have arrow primes with 35.3 meters but our total range here our rule is actually uh, arrow over 2 this first part plus arrow prime and so we can get that total range as 17.67 plus 35.3 which gives us 52.97 meters uh, so our arrow in two um, like significant figures is 53 meters okay so we can go over here over here and then also talk about um the horizontal velocity because remember that we want to get the velocity which it hits this point here at e so the horizontal velocity does not change so our horizontal velocity for at this point b is still the horizontal velocity at e here which is 20 meters per second so i just need to make sure that we take note of that so uh to get vy we can use one of the equations of motion and then apply in the vertical direction okay so vy squared equals uy squared plus 2gs and so um our ui squared at this particular point at b the particle is traveling horizontally has no initial vertical component of its velocity so that ui is zero so basically our vy to be the square root of 2gs um again 2gs our s is basically this h right so our h the maximum height is 15.3 so we can basically use that and then we get our vy our vy is 17.3 meters per second so the velocity with which it hits the ground or the speed with which it hits the ground is the square root of the vertical component squared plus the horizontal component squared so we get that down and you have the vertical component is 17.3 the horizontal is 10 point 10 squared so you actually have approximately 20 meters per second and yes guys that was what you need you were required to do in this question to end all uh, i think we eventually gave this question for 30 marks yeah with the, the simple things you had to do and then you could also get the angle that the particle lands on the ground with so tan theta is basically v y over v x so theta is tan inverse of vertical component of a horizontal which is 41 degrees from the horizontal yes so that's that's basically like the little details you had to do with the problem all right